Uh, I never had any ambitions to become a politician, just as simply the, uh, the situation arose and uh, I was encouraged by my colleagues in the Labour and Trade Union movement to go forward for it. And at that time I thought it would be, it wasn't a job for me because I was just a normal wee working class guy and being a politician was for somebody far more intelligent than I was. Uh, I've since found out, since going into the House of Commons, uh, there are far more less intelligent people in there than we'd have believed, but there is a distinct lack of working class uh, people coming through in terms of uh, members of parliament, and I think that's something that we need to build upon. I would have never been there if it wasn't for the trade union movement, and I'm eternally grateful for the work that the trade union movement done in terms of helping me to get there. If we are truly to represent people uh, of a working class background, then we need people from a working class background to be uh, in, the, in the mother of parliament, as they call it. I just think there are far too many people these days who are looking at politics, particularly in the Labour Party, but also in other parties as well, as just a method of a career. My view is if you believe or if you care for people, that's the reason why you want to get into politics. If you care for your community, that's the reason why you went into politics. If you care for yourself, then I would suggest you look at another party other than the Labour Party. But I, I, when I started, well, I seen these sort of uh, injustices that was happening, not just in the industrial world, but throughout the world as well, at that time in places like El Salvador, and today in Colombia, etc. But, you know, I seen the injustice was happening in the workplace as well, and, you know, I, I, I took the decision then that, you know, I don't leave it for somebody else to do it, I need to do it myself, along with others, and that's what trade unions was all about, about working collectively. And I seen the health and safety things that were happening, the people who were being exposed to asbestos, for instance, who are now seeing deaths of mesothelioma, which is probably the worst kind of death, cancerous death you'll ever see in your life. And, and I seen the injustices and I wanted to do something about it. So rather than sit back and let somebody else do it for me, I decided to get involved. And I think that's what other people need to do. We need more people to get involved in the trade union and labour movement. Don't leave it to anybody else. First of all, I'm chair of the occupation, the all-party occupational health and safety group um, at Westminster, and I genuinely do believe that we don't give health and safety the importance it deserves. Equally so, the current coalition um, cuts, austerity cuts, are looking at cutting yet again health and safety legislation and indeed health and safety inspectors. That has major implications for people at the workplace. And if I just be sort of non-partisan for a moment, I just think there's not enough politicians at Westminster that take health and safety serious and they fall into the trap set by the Daily Mail. The health and safety is just a big administrative burden on employers and we don't really need it. So I think the more people we have that's it's, it's banging a drum for health and safety, the, the, the better. In terms of my other uh, role as, uh, on, on the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee, I think we've done a good job in exposing just exactly what was going on uh, in the Murdoch Empire. And, and at this stage I have to pay credit to Tom Watson who's been absolutely magnificent and also Paul, Paul Farrelly who's been absolutely magnificent as well. But I think that we've brought to a head some of the injustices and the corrupt practices that's going on at News International and I now see people have been charged and we're going to court and I think you know, that you know, unlike their victims they'll have their day in court and be able to def defend themselves. The victims that the lives that they destroyed did not have the chance to defend themselves and some of them are still suffering as is their families. So from that point of view I think the Select Committee did an excellent job in bringing to boot some of the people who are carrying out uh, criminal behaviour in the news of the world and hopefully the law will come down on them. In my own constituency, I'm now picking up uh, serious problems, particularly youth unemployment, where people are now in long-term youth unemployment. And that's thing that, well, for young people to be unemployed, but particularly for a length of time, it's soul-destroying. Uh, I had three years of unemployment, and it was the worst three years of my life, and that was basically because um, I was banned from working by the Economic League, who blacklisted me and made sure that I couldn't get a job. Now, uh, hopefully, I'll turn the corner of that, and the trade unions have been uh, instrumental in making sure that that doesn't happen. But I, I'm now picking up uh, uh, people being unemployed for a long period of time. And when you're unemployed, you know, you become depressed, you become agitated, you become negative. Um, so that's what we need to do. So these austerity measures that the government has, have introduced, even today experts are saying to George Osborne that we need to change direction, that these austerity measures are not working, so therefore we need a plan B. And I don't buy into this, that you know, cutting public services is the way to save money. I am now, as my role as MP, I'm now picking up cases of vulnerable people who are now experiencing at first hand just exactly what these austerity cuts are. 
Well, basically the role of the chair of the Unite Trade Union um, at Parliament is to try and bring forward the issues that matter to Unite the Union. That's not to say that we, you know, we are at the, uh, the, the beck and call of Unite the Union, but we listen to what the issues are in terms of our members. And almost always the issues are the same ones that we have in terms of people losing their jobs, in terms of trying to build up manufacturing, in terms of protecting public services. So that's the role of Unite the Union at Parliament at Westminster, but also working in conjunction with other trade unions at Parliament because they have the same issues as well. So that's what we need to do is work collectively. For too long the trade unions have been treated like a drunken uncle in the attic, and the only time they've spoken to is when, when they want money from I think that's going to change. You know, and the trade unions have to become you know, more influential. Unfortunately, there are people in the party who see the role of trade unions uh, currently as they have too much influence, and they are already working uh, with employers, large businesses, to try and undermine the influence, indeed, the role of trade unions. And I'm hopeful, and I'm using no, long, no stronger word than that, I'm hopeful that Ed Miliband resists the temptations to break the link that some people are arguing for for the trade unions, because they see the trade unions as a backward step. And I think that's a, that's a negative way to go down. And I just think that, you know, at, at, in this day and age, working people need the trade unions more than ever. They need a good, strong, progressive Labour Party more, more than ever. And I think that now the time is right, and I think the appetite is right there amongst workers, amongst, honestly, uh, progressive Labour activists for the party to go down in a direction that's going to truly, truly reflect their views and not the views of big business. Um, don't sit on your backside and let somebody else do it for you. Get involved, whatever level of politics you want to get involved, whatever level of trade union you want to get involved in, please do it. Don't leave it to somebody else because that won't happen. If everybody leaves it to somebody else, nothing's going to happen.